studying RCOG guideline 37E. Pre-pregnancy and antenatal risk assessment. What are the risk factors for venous thromboembolism (VTE) in pregnancy and in the preperium, and what is the magnitude of risk for these factors? All women should undergo a documented assessment of the risk factors for venous thromboembolism in early pregnancy or pre-pregnancy. And risk assessment should be repeated if the woman is admitted to the hospital for any reason or develops other intercurrent problem. Risk assessment should be repeated again in the intrapartum or immediately postpartum. Any woman with four or more current risk factors other than previous VT or thromophilia should be considered for prophylactic low molecular weight heparin throughout the intended period and will require prophylactic low molecular weight heparin six weeks postnatally, but our postnatal assessment should be done. Any woman with three current risk factors other than previous VTE should be considered for prophylactic low molecular weight heparin from 28 weeks and will require prophylactic low molecular weight heparin for six weeks postnatal, but postnatal risk assessment should be done. Any woman with a two current risk factors other than the previous VTE or thrombophilia should be considered for prophylactic low molecular weight happen at least 10 days postpartum. Women admitted to the hospital when pregnancy including to the gynae wards with hyperemesis gravidarum or ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome should usually be offered prophylactic low molecular weight happen unless and until there is specific contraindication as the risk of the labor. The risk of the VTE should be discussed with a woman at risk and reasons for individual recommendations explained. Previous VTE, how should women with a previous VTE be managed in pregnancy? Single previous venous thromboembolism. Women with a previous VTE should be offered pre-pregnancy counseling and prospective management plan for prophylaxis in the pregnancy made and those who become pregnant before receiving such counseling should be referred at the earliest opportunity in pregnancy to clinician with the expertise in management of thrombosis. Women with a previous VTE except those with a single previous VTE related to the major surgery and no other risk factors should be offered thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight happen throughout the antenatal period. Women with the previous VTE should have a clear, uh, careful history documented where objective documentation is not available. The previous diagnosis of VTE can be assumed in cases where the woman gives good history and receives prolonged greater than 6 weeks therapeutic anticoagulation. Now, thrombophilia associated venous thromboembolism. Heritable thrombophilia Women with the previous VTE associated with thrombin deficiency who will often be on the long-term oral anticoagulation should be offered thromboprophylaxis with a higher dose of low molecular weight happen 50% or 75% of the full dose. Management should be undertaken in collaboration with a hematologist with expertise in thrombosis in the pregnancy and consideration given to the antenatal anti-AXA monitoring and potential anti-thrombin replacement at the initiation of the labor. If anti-XA levels are measured, a test that does not use exogenous antithrombin should be used and 4 hourly peak levels of 0.5 to 1 international per unit per ml should be aimed for. Other heritable thrombophilia defects are lower risk and can be managed with standard doses of thromboprophylaxis. Now coming to the acquired thrombophilia. Women with VTE associated with antiphospholipid syndrome APS or who will often be on the long-term oral anticoagulation should be offered thromboprophylaxis with a higher dose of low molecular weight happening either 50%, 75% or full dose antenatally and six weeks postnatally or until return to the oral anticoagulant therapy after delivery that is the new 2015 guideline. 
Now, pregnant women with APS and prior VTE or arterial thrombosis should be managed in collaboration with a hematologist and or rheumatologist with expertise in this area that is new 2015 recommendation coming to the previous recurrent vte what extra advice is needed for women with previous venous thromboembolism previous recurrent venous thromboembolism advice regarding the doses of low molecular weight heparin in pregnancy should be sought from a clinician with expertise in the hemostasis and pregnancy that is new 2015 recommendation now some women with a previous recurrent venous thromboembolism require higher doses of low molecular weight heparin that is the new 2015 recommendation women on the long-term warfarin or other oral anticoagulant should be counseled about the risk of these agents to the fetus and advised to stop their oral anticoagulant therapy and change low molecular weight heparin as soon as the pregnancy is confirmed ideally within the two weeks of the missed period and before the six weeks of pregnancy that is also 2015 recommendation now women not on warfarin or other oral anticoagulants should be advised to start low molecular weight happen as soon as they have a positive pregnancy test that is also new 2015 recommendation antiphospholipid antibodies how should women with antiphospholipid antibodies be treated now, persistent antiphospholipid antibodies, that is lupus anticoagulant and or anticardiolipin and, and beta-2 glycoprotein-1 antibodies in a woman without previous VTE should be considered as a risk factor for thrombosis such that if she has other risk factors, she may be considered for antenatal or postnatal thromboprophylaxis. Now, coming to the timing of initiation of the thromboprophylaxis. When should thromboprophylaxis be started antenatal thromboprophylaxis for those with the previous vte should be should begin as early as in the pregnancy as practical that is also new 2015 recommendation women without previous vte and without particular first trimester risk factors or admission to the hospital but with the four other risk factors should be considered for antenatal prophylactic prophylaxis throughout the pregnancy that is the new 2015 recommendation now women without previous vte and without particular first trimester risk factors or admission to the hospital but with three other risk factors can start antenatal prophylaxis at 28 weeks of gestation new 2015 recommendation first trimester risk factors what are the first trimester risk factors for vte and how should they be managed women admitted with hyperemesis gabdianum should be considered for thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin and be con and can discontinue thromboprophylaxis when hyperemesis resolves now, women with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome should be considered for thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin in the first trimester, that is new 2015 recommendation. Women with IVF pregnancy and three other risk factors should be considered for thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight happen starting in the first trimester new 2015 recommendation thromboprophylaxis during labor and delivery including the 
use of regional analgesia venture thromboprophylaxis be interrupted for delivery women receiving antenatal low molecular weight heparin should be advised that if they have any vaginal bleeding or once labor begins they should not inject any further low molecular weight heparin warfarin used in pregnancy is restricted to the few situation where heparin is uh, considered unsuitable for example some women with mechanical heart valve women receiving long term anticoagulants with warfarin can be converted from low molecular weight heparin to the warfarin postpartum when the risk of hemorrhage is reduced usually 5 to 7 days after delivery warfarin is safe in breastfeeding now, dextron should be avoided antenatally and in the intrapartum period because of the risk of anaphylactide reactions. Oral thrombin and AXA inhibitors, non vitamin K antagonist oral anticoagulant, NOAC, should be avoided in the pregnant woman. Use of NOAC is not currently recommended in the women who are breastfeeding. Anti embolism stocking, the use of prophylactic properly applied anti embolism stocking of appropriate size and providing graduated. Compression with a cough pressure of 14 to 15 mm is recommended in pregnancy and in the puerperium for the women who are hospitalized and have contraindicated to low molecular weight heparin. These include women who are hospitalized post cesarean suction combined with low molecular weight heparin and considered to be particularly at high risk of VTE, previous VTE, more than four risk factors antenatally or more than two risk factors postnatally and women traveling long distance for more than four hours. Now coming to the contraindications to the low molecular weight happen, which women should not be given thromboprophylaxis with a low molecular weight happen. Low molecular weight happen should be avoided, discontinued or postponed in the woman at the risk of bleeding after careful consideration of the balance of the risk of the bleeding and thrombosis. Women with a previous or current allergic reaction to low molecular weight heparin should be offered an alternative preparation. Further advice on the management of the woman with both VTE risk factors and bleeding risk factors or low molecular weight heparin allergy may be sought from hematologists with expertise in the management of thrombosis and bleeding disorders in pregnancy. Now coming to the risk scoring methodologies, a former VTE risk assessment with numerical scoring for all pregnant and postpartum women is recommended. So that is something about our COG guideline about thromoprophylaxis. Thank you so much for your patience. Well, have this.